Dear students, this is Dr. S. M. Indumati from the Department of Biotechnology, School of Bio and Chemical Engineering, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. Today, I am here for a presentation about the topic Pathogenicity and Virulence of Staphylococci. To start with, Staphylococci is a gram positive bacteria, cocci in shape, that is, spherical in shape, arranged in grape like clusters. They are non-motile and non-sporing which means they don't move or they don't produce spores. Staphylococci is basically classified into 24 different species and the most important medically important species is called Staphylococcus aureus and other species include Staphylococcus albus, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Staphylococcus hyacus, Staphylococcus intermedius as well as Staphylococcus citrius and so on. This particular Staphylococcus aureus produces yellow colored pigments when plated on culture media. Uh, coming to the cultural characteristics, Staphylococci does not require any special media for its growth. Uh, rather, it could be grown on uh, ordinary media like nutrient agar under optimal conditions. They are able to produce smooth, convex, opaque, shiny, translucent colonies on nutrient media. Beyond nutrient agar, uh, blood agar can be used as well as Meconchi agar can be used. On blood agar, beta hemolysis is formed, that is complete hemolysis of the RBCs are seen on blood agar, as well as pink color colonies are formed on Meconchi agar, uh, indicating that lactose fermentation has happened. Apart from nutrient agar, blood agar and Meconchi agar, Selective medias like Ludlam's medium, salt milk agar, salt broth as well as Robertson cooked meat medium can be used uh, along with 8 to 10 percent of NaCl that is sodium chloride. Coming to the biochemical reactions of Staphylococci, Staphylococci is basically indole negative, MR and VP positive and they are positive for the following enzymes which means they produce the following enzymes like coagulase, phosphatase, urease, catalase as well as citrus. Talking about the virulence factors, Staphylococci basically produces two types of diseases, the infections and intoxications. Infections happens when the organisms enter through the skin or subcutaneous tissue, invade the bloodstream and spread through the cells and tissues of the human or animal host, while intoxications happen when these organisms that has entered a host has started to produce some toxins and when those toxins produce the clinical manifestations. Infections and intoxications are caused by certain virulence factors and the virulence factors that cause infections are cell associated polymers, cell surface proteins as well as extracellular enzymes while intoxications are caused by different types of toxins. First we will look into uh, the factors that cause infections. The cell associated polymers, there are three different types of cell associated polymers. Uh, the first one is peptidoglycan, the next one is tcoic acid and the last one is capsular polysaccharides. Peptidoglycan and tcoic acid are the two major components that make the uh, bacterial, gram positive bacterial cell wall. Peptidoglycan uh, is a substance made up of a copolymer of NAG and NAM that is N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine. This peptidoglycan confers rigidity and integrity to the gram positive bacterial cell wall thereby protecting the bacterium from any harsh attacks of the host's immune system. The next one is the tcoic acid which is uh, which is actually a cell wall antigen and it is an important component of the gram positive uh, cell wall. This tcoic acid prevents the bacterium from complement mediated opsonization which means opsonization is a process in which certain substances called opsonins tag the foreign antigens and make them available for phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a process of cell engulfing which means humans we have certain type of immune cells called macrophages and these cells uh, have a special affinity towards foreign antigens when they are attacked by opsins. These macrophages uh, look into the foreign antigens if they are attacked by the opsins and go engulf them, disintegrate them inside the phagolysosome and release them as waste products. So this is called phagocytosis and this is an important uh, defense mechanism of uh, our immune system.
uh, this tetoic acid prevents the bacteria from this type of phagocytosis as well as opsonization. What is complement mediated opsonization? Complements are active serum proteins. There are around 20 different complement proteins present in our uh, body and this complement enters two different types of pathways. The classical complement pathway and alternative complement pathway. In the alternative complement pathway, when the complement C3 gets split into C3A and C3B, this C3B becomes an opsonin and tags the foreign substances get and make them available for phagocytosis. So, tecoic acid plays a special role in preventing the bacterium from this type of opsonization and phagocytosis as well as tecoic acid helps the bacteria to get the bacteria adhere to the host cell receptors easily. The last one is the capsular polysaccharide. Uh, capsule is the outermost layer of any bacterial cell uh, that is outside the cell wall and capsules are made up of polysaccharides. These capsules uh, have an important role in virulence because they protect the bacteria from phagocytosis as well as opsonization. You can see an image of this uh, gram positive bacterial cell wall which is comprised of peptidoglycan as well as lipotechoic acid and another image of uh, bacterial capsule that is highlighted in brown color and the references are given below. The next are cell surface proteins as well as enzymes. There are two different types of cell surface proteins. Uh, one is protein A and the next one is the clumping factor. The protein A has several biological and physiological uh, functions to be done, especially they are antiphagocytic, which means they prevent the bacteria from phagocytosis and they have anti-complementary effects, which mean they prevent the bacteria from the antibactericidal effects of the complement proteins uh, and they aggregate the human platelets as well. That is platelet aggregating factors. The next one is the clumping factor or you can call them bound coagulase also. This bound coagulase is an important feature of Staphylococcus aureus because this is employed in the slide coagulase test where a drop of human or rabbit plasma is allowed to react with the drop of this uh, Staphylococcus aureus if agglutination occurs that indicates a positive test for the presence of bound coagulase and this slight test is an important test to distinguish between Staphylococcus aureus and other species of Staphylococci. Talking about the enzymes, the first enzyme is coagulase. Coagulase is an important enzyme causing uh, or giving virulence to staphylococci because this coagulase is able to break the fibrin barrier of the cells and tissues of the human hosts. Thereby, it enables the organisms to easily evade the cells and tissues of the host. Then we have lipases uh, which help the organisms to infect the host through the skin and subcutaneous tissues. Then we have hyaluronidases. These enzymes easily break down the hyaluronic acid which makes up the connective tissues of the human cells thereby enabling the organisms to easily spread through the connective tissues as well. Then we have staphylokinases or fibrinolysins as well as proteases and these help in the initiation and spread of infection of the organisms into the host. Then we have a thermostable nuclease which easily disintegrates or break down the bacterial nucleic acid that is the DNA. Finally, we have protein receptors. Staphylococci have uh, special protein receptors for certain uh, mammalian cells. Uh, they have particular affinity towards certain mammalian cells and these receptors help the bacteria to get adhere to the host cell surface. Coming to the toxins, these toxins cause intoxications in the host cells. Uh, there are different types of toxins to be spoken about. The first are cytolytic toxins. And there are five different types of cytolytic toxins, alpha hemolysins, beta hemolysins, gamma hemolysins and delta hemolysins as well as leucosidins. Alpha hemolysins, they are basically proteins. They are able to lyse rabbit red blood cells while they are unable to lyse human or sheep red blood cells. They are cytotoxic which means they are toxic to cells. They are neurotoxic, toxic to the nerves. They are dermonecrotic, they cause uh, necrosis to the skin and surrounding tissues. They are leukocidal, they are toxic or uh, they cause death to the WBC cells and they are lethal the, the, which means they cause death to the cells. And then we have beta hemolysins. It's basically an enzyme called sphingomyelinase. And this beta hemolysin is able to lyse sheep RBC, but they are not able to lyse human or rabbit RBC. They exhibit a phenomenon called hot cold phenomenon, which means when this beta hemolysins are expressed, 
Hemolysis occurs at a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, but that would be visible only when the experimental setup is frozen down to a freezing temperature that is called hot cold phenomenon. Then we have the gamma hemolysis which are composed of two different uh, or two separate entities which are highly essential for its hemolytic activity. Then we have the delta hemolysis which have detergent like effect or surfactant like effect on the RBCs, WBCs, platelets and macrophages. The last cytolytic toxins are uh, the leucosidins which is also called as Panton Valentine's toxin, which is named after its discoverers. This leucosidins uh, are actually leuco leucotoxic, obviously, because they are toxic to the WBC cells. These are also composed of two separate subunits called S yes and F. So these gamma hemolysins as well as the leucosidins are grouped together and they are called as synergohymenotropic toxins. The other toxins of staphylococci includes enterotoxins. PSST, toxic shock syndrome toxin as well as exfoliative toxin. So the enterotoxins of staphylococci basically cause food poisoning incidents due to staphylococci. These toxins are heat resistant that is they could resist up to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for 10 to 40 minutes and once these toxins enter into a human host it could cause fever, hypertension, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, thrombocytopenia and so on. And this toxin are profusely produced in carbohydrate and protein rich foods. That's why meat, milk and fish products if kept open for longer time have more possibilities of developing uh, the organisms as well as its toxin. The toxin is antigen antigenically divided into eight types A, B, C1, C2, C3, D, E and F. The toxin can be neutralized using antitoxins and they could be detected using ELISA that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay as well as latex agglutination tests. Then we have the toxic shock syndrome toxin. It was earlier called as enterotoxin F or pyrogenic exotoxin C and this toxin causes multiple organ system diseases or multi system diseases because this toxin causes diseases through the skin initially it causes fever hypertension again nausea vomiting diarrhea and erythematous rashes all over the integumentary system that is the skin surfaces followed by the integumentary system TSST is able to cause infection to the genital organs also but generally staphylococci have no prominence in causing genital infection rather staphylococci are easily uh, able to attack uh, the medical equipments like heart valves shunts prosthetics, vaginal tampons and so on. So this TSST came into prominence when women in USA they started to use vaginal tampons during menstruation and staphylococci started to develop in their genital parts and started to produce toxin. Apart from this integumentary system as well as the genital system, TSST is able to attack the T4 lymphocytes of our immune system also. That is why it causes multi-organ system diseases. The last one is called the exfoliative toxin or the exfoliatin which causes a condition called staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome SSSS. The worser part of this disease is called Ritter's disease in infants and toxic epidermal necrolysis in adults. The milder form of the disease caused by this toxin is called Pemphigus neonatorum as well as Bullus impetigo. Both these conditions form sores, red sores on face and all over the body as well as blisters that are filled with pus. Talking about the staphylococcal diseases, staphylococci are able to cause different types of diseases to different organ systems like the skin and soft tissue infections, musculoskeletal, respiratory, central nervous system, endovascular and UTA that is urinary tract infections. So skin and soft tissue infections include folliculitis that is the inflammation of the follicles of the skin, furuncles and carbuncles which means uh, boils, red boils all over the skin and cutaneous tissues and wound infections if there is any cuts or wounds on our skin are found the staphylococci can easily enter through those wounds and cause infections then peronychia infections of the nails, impetigo, red sores on the face of infants and children and cellulitis uh, infections of the cells. 
Then we have musculoskeletal infections caused by staphylococcus namely uh, osteomyelitis infection of the bones, arthritis joint pains, bursitis infection of the bursa or febrigia of birds as well as pyomyositis which means inflammation of the muscles causing pyogenic lesions in them. Then we have respiratory infections like tonsillitis and pharyngitis that is infection of the tonsils and pharynx, sinusitis and otitis infection of the sinuses and ears. We have bronchopneumonia, lung abscesses and empyema. Empyema is a condition where pockets of pus are filled in the internal organs. Then we have infection of the central nervous system which includes abscess in the brain that is pus formations in the brain, meningitis infections of the or inflammations of the meninges as well as intracranial thrombophlebitis. Thrombophlebitis is the formation of blood clots and in this case it is intracranial thrombophlebitis which means blood clots inside the brain. Then we have endovascular infections like bacteremia, circulation of bacteria in blood, septicemia. When bacteria circulates in blood, multiplies there and produces toxic products that is called septicemia along with high swinging type of fever. The next one is pyemia where the pyogenic staphylococci enters the bloodstream and causes pus filled lesions in the internal organs. And the last one is endocarditis that is the inflammation of the heart muscles. Then we have UTI, urinary tract infection. Staphylococci, uh, as I already said, uh, they don't cause any genital infections uh, in nature. But as I have already said, like it could enter through the medical equipments like catheters, heart valves, shunts and prosthetics. They are easily able to enter through the tampons also. Thereby, they could easily cause some kind of genital infections through the implants as well. So what are the treatment for the staphylococcal infections means like... Uh, Initially, benzyl penicillin was given as a drug of choice. After benzyl penicillin, methicillin and cloaxacillins were preferred. But staphylococci had the ability to produce an enzyme called beta-lactamase. This beta-lactamase enzyme can easily break down these uh, antibiotics like penicillin, methicillin and cloaxacillin. Apart from the production of beta-lactamase, uh, staphylococci strains called methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus started developing. So these three drugs were completely proved worthless to fight against staphylococcal infections. So uh, in case of life-threatening infections, vancomycin would be the drug of choice. Apart from vancomycin, Ticoplanins can also be used. In case of topical infections, uh, no systematic antibiotics are required. Only powders or ointments uh, composed of uh, bacitracin, mupirocin or chlorhexidin can be used. If the infection is more deep-seated than superficial, rifampicin would be a drug of choice along with another oral antibiotic. We have reached the end of the slides. Thank you students for watching my presentation so patiently.